Yeah. Start. Hello. Hello, everyone, to another session in the series of webinar conducted by Cyber Group. Today's webinar is on the important topic of the digital era, cybersecurity. So I, Kushagra Mathur, Tech Head Cyber Crew, along with Kalra Vashne, Programming Head Cyber Crew, will be the moderators for today's webinar. Welcome our Honorable Principal Ma'am, Director Ma'am, Vice Principal Ma'am, Headmistress Ma'am, and other respected teachers. We, uh, we welcome you to, uh, to today's webinar on cybersecurity. Hope you find this session informative, Ma'am. This session will not only warn you towards the rational usage of internet, but also tell you the ways by which you can protect yourself from almost every kind of cyber attack. There's no silver bullet solution with cybersecurity. A layered solution is the only viable defense. And that's why learning about cybersecurity has become a necessity for all 21st century internet users. In case you have any doubt, you can always ask your query in the Q&A section and we will surely try to resolve it. Hope you find the session interesting and super informative. So let's get started. Hello everyone. I am Ra my name is Rahul Sharma with my partner Aman Sharma. Today we will going to conduct this session of cyber security. First of all, let's have the overview of today's webinar. Today we will uh, learn about cyber security cyber bullying we will discuss about a different type of hackers and what are the cyber attacks that you use uh, we will have a quick discussion over antivirus we will also discuss about some safety tips and a lot more is there to come first of all the main question arises what is cyber security cyber security is the practice of defending computers servers mobile devices electronic system networks and data from malicious attacks it is also known as information technology security. The term applies in a variety of contexts from business to mobile computing. As being a part of digital era, we all know how much it is important to keep our data safe. Here it is where we require cyber security to protect our data from being transported to bad hands. Uh, next is our data breach. A data breach is an incident that exposes confidential or protected information. A data breach might involve the loss or theft of your social security number, bank account or credit card numbers, personal health information, passwords or email. Uh, here are some biggest data breach in the last few years and here we have a graph of data breach. So you can uh, just have a look and have a mindset. Uh, how cyber secure, how much cyber secure we need. Uh, next is our cyber bullying. What is cyber bullying? Cyber bullying is bullying that takes place over digital devices like cell phones, computers and tablets. Cyber bullying can also occur through SMS, texts and apps or online on social media platforms, forums or on gaming communities. Uh, sharing and participating, uh, participating in such forums can lead uh, can lead to cyber security, uh, cyber bullying. Cyber bullying includes sending, posting, or sharing negative, harmful, false, or mean content about someone else. It can include sharing personal or private information about someone else, causing embarrassment or humiliation. Some cyber bullying crosses the line into unlawful or criminal behavior. Uh, so next is how can we deal with uh, cyber bullying? First of all, we have to keep in mind. We first do not have to accept friend requests from unknown people on social media platforms. Remember what you post online remains over there only. Do not share your personal information like date of birth, address and phone numbers on social media or on any other online platform. You can go to privacy settings on social media platform to select who can access your post online. Do not install unwanted softwares and apps like online games, etc. from unknown sources. Be careful while revealing your personal details or identity if you are if you're using common spaces for online interactions. Block and if needed, you can report using the site's reporting function as soon as possible if someone makes you uncomfortable on social networking site. Next is our uh, IP address. Uh, 
can you guess what ip address is you can comment in the q and a section you can just like uh, write what you think about what ip address is kushagra can you please check if there are any answers over there yeah sure uh there are some answers over there uh yes can you please uh, spell them uh there is an answer ip address a unique address by anonymous yes actually you are right every computer has its uh, unique ip address uh, which is it fixed it stand for basically internet protocol address and uh, you can hide this address uh, using a vpn a virtual portable network which gives you online privacy and anonymity by creating a private network from a public internet connection vpn masks your uh, internet protocol address so you uh, so your online actions are virtually untraceable most importantly surfing the web or transacting over uh, over an unsecured wifi network means you can expose your private information and browsing habits that's why a virtual private network is used better known as vpn uh, should must be uh, should should be a must for anyone concerned about their online security and privacy but beware every free trial vpn is not 100% secure and even in some cases it could lead uh, lead to leak your any of these free calling service uh, services will sell your personal information to third parties also with some uh, with some even going as far as placing extra advertising on your uh, online platforms they uh, they may can even distribute your ip address welcoming uh, criminal activities uh, that is traced back to your machine not theirs uh, if you are feeling like someone is spamming you or uh, just uh, is a fake person is not revealing is not telling his original identity here is a quick method by you can just uh, know their look know their approximate location and see that how legit they are uh, i will just open my browser over here i will just search grabify grabify.link sorry to disturb you rahul but yes. uh, uh, i think let us wait for a moment for some more participants to join then we will start after a little bit uh, yeah sure we can do that Uh, till the time you can you and uh, aman can tell us uh, how you came to cyber crew and what was your journey in cyber crew uh, aman would you like to please share your experience hello everyone my name is aman sharma i was ex vice president of cyber crew in batch of 2019 it was very nice journey actually i have learned so much about this we have such a big event to host from uh, to represent our school and uh, when i was the vice president the school was having the largest participant so it was quite difficult to manage everyone yes uh, cyber crew is difficult but we have so much thing to learn about it like how to make videos we also trained our juniors that how they can do this how can they edit the video how to make a website we have a very wonderful memories also like webinars we also had a episode 1 and this is the sequel of it episode 2 so it was a quite nice journey what about you rahul you have been selected as president of cyber crew So uh, last year last year as you know i was the web head i i remember being the only core member of class 11th uh, it was really great working with you all you shubham apoor i will really miss you all guys i think it's so while you are enjoying here. right now yes i am enjoying right now but in this lockdown state i really miss working at school sitting in the lab but i think the this year webinar will be online so have you prepared everything clearly yes we are actually working on the compu fest thing also okay i guess control many of them must have joined shall we proceed yeah they have joined we can start it now thank you uh yes 
uh, here I just quickly went to the site grabify.link is the link of the website. I will I can write any address over here which which uh, the person will be redire redirected to. I will just copy this. Yep. And press create link. I agree and create URL. Here is a quick captcha. Yeah. Here color is black. Hair color is black and is kind of brown. Check. Yes. Yes. Uh, after creating the link, uh, I am having my redirected link over here, which is WhatsApp web. I've, and here is my new URL, which I will send to the person. There are many options available over here. Change domain. I can change the domain also. There are many domains like learn coding, Shopify, free gifts, card.co, join my site and many others. Uh, if I want to mo uh, look more legit, I will just go to learn coding.co. I can add some extension extensions over here dot CSV. Path and parameter ID if I will just go for ID. This is my new link. I will copy it. Uh, Smart logger gives you extra features over here. I will just send this link to Aman. Aman, can you please open the link? Uh, when the person will click on the link and open it, I will have a re one result over here. Okay, I'm doing it. So I will just refresh it so that the result will be loaded over here. Here I can see Aman has clicked over here. Uh, here I'm having his IP address. I can have the person's IP address and simply go to uh, IP locator. Sorry, IP. IP location. I will paste the IP over here and IP lookup. Uh, I will get the la uh, latitudes and longitude over here. Uh, his region city is Delhi and region is Delhi. I can just have a quick uh, idea if the person is legit or not. Uh, moving forward, we will uh, now on the basis we have distributed hackers in three categories. The black hat hacker, gray hat hacker and white hat hackers. Uh, black hat hackers like all other hackers black hat hackers usually have extensive knowledge about breaking into computer networks and bypassing security protocols they are also responsible for writing malware which is a method used to gain access to these systems their primary motivation is usually for personal or financial gain but they can also be involved in cyber spying protests or perhaps are just addicted to the thrill of cyber crime. On the other hand, we have white hat hackers. White hat hackers choose their powers for good rather than evil, also known as ethical hacker. White hat hacker employ the same methods of hacking as black hat hackers with one exception. They do it with permission from the owner, owner of the system first, which makes the process completely legal. And in between, we are having gray hat hackers as in life uh, there are gray areas also which are neither black nor white. Gray hat hackers are the blend of both black and white hat hackers. Often gray hat hackers will uh, look for vulnerabilities in a system without the owner's permission or knowledge. If issues are found, they will report them to the owner, sometimes requesting a small fee to fix the issue. If the owner does not respond, then the hacker will post their newly found exploit over the internet for the world to see it. However, this type of hacking is also considered as illegal because the hacker did not receive permission from the owner before attempting the attack to the system. Uh, let uh, here is a short activity for you. Here I'm having a, a true and false session for you. Uh, first of all, first one is the domain of any website does not. You can write the answer in the Q&A section like a dash true or false. OK. First one is the domain of uh, the domain name of any website does not in any way indicate the website credibility. You can write your answers in the Q&A section. Kalrov, can you please check? 
have a look over there. Yeah, let me check if there are any answers. Uh, next, we are having our B. Uh, when reading offline, the resources may take several seconds to open as the entire file is encrypted. However, once that process is complete, pages open rapidly. Color uh, of, I guess there must be answers. Uh, yeah, they are saying that one A is false. One is false. Uh, OK, let's wait for the others. Uh, we are having C over here. Uh, critical thinking is one of the components of digital literacy that involves the process of uh, evaluating information, posting it and determine, determining if it's worthwhile or not. You can write the answers. Uh, D. Critical thinking not only improves our functional skills, but also facilitates learning and provide new avenues for professional advancement. E. Digital literacy involves the ability to read, understand and interpret digital process, whereas digital communication is the ability to communicate, connect and interact with others. Color uh, I guess they must be writing. Yeah, they are writing and we are getting many answers like C is some some are saying C is true and some are saying C is false. Then we have we are having E is uh, true, B is true. Then there's a mixed answer. I think that uh, we should reveal the answers. Uh, yes, let's have a review over the real answers. First A is false, B is also false. Our third statement is true, fourth is false and fifth is true. Now I would like to request uh, Aman to tell us about different types of cyber attacks. Hello everyone. My name is Aman Sharma. I am the ex vice president of the cyber crew 2019. It was such a nice journey and would especially like to thank our IT department team who was always there to help us without any hesitation. If they were not there, it was nearly impossible to organize such a big event smoothly with so much of participants. So in this difficult time in COVID-19 pandemic, the pillar for country growth is based on online activities like online classes, payment, including net banking, wallet and shopping administrations and management, which is also known as digitalizations. In this security is a major concern uh, in the digital era. This is why we have decided to conduct a webinar on cyber security to train you guys how to surf internet safely. And I would like to thank our school that they have given me this opportunity to under make you understand. Now, I will tell you about different types of hack with demonstrations. First, keyloggers. I think many of you have already known what is a keylogger. But some are there who do not know what is a keylogger. Well, I am here and will explain you properly. So keyloggers are a type of monitoring softwares designed to record keystrokes that are made by users. It is one of the oldest form of cyber threat. These loggers record the information that you type and send it back to the hacker or the third party. Criminal use keyloggers to steal personal data or financial credentials, which they can sell or use for their profit. However, they also have legitimate use within the business to monitor the employees. Even law enforcement agency agencies also use keyloggers for surveillance process. We have already installed keylogger in our laptop, so I would like to request Rahul to show them. Rahul, can you show them the keylogger, please? Uh, yes, I'm opening keylogger over here. There As is my key now you screen. So we have resumed the monitoring and now we will show you that how it works. Now I will go to start and type word and press enter. So here is this. I would like something, anything. I would write something. As now we will check the keystrokes. It has option of application keystroke clipboard. Now we will go to keystrokes and we'll check it downstairs. See there is word. I have write word in the start option and we can see that 
it is W O R D word as it comes under the keystroke option. That's why it is showing every word individually. And now we will go to our next attack that is DDoS. Now coming to ne next attack DDoS. DDoS stands for distribution denial of services. It is an attack which is made on a network, making it inaccessible to the users. DDoS attack work by flooding with traffic or syndicate information that trigger a crash. For this attack, I will not show you the demonstration, but I will show you how it is done and by which application it is done. But before that, I would like to uh, say that I am using uh, the application which contains malware due to which I would highly recommend not to use it it in your PC or you may expose some of your credentials to the hackers and this video is only for educational purpose. I don't promote any activity. Rahul, can you please show them the video? Over here. So see, there is a website of this school, iSchool.vn. This is an application which we will use For the here we can add threads to increase our data packages. Here on the plus we will add our log URL and choose a booster. Now we will start the attack. As you can see in the output section, we have already sending the data packages and it's been nearly 1.7 MBs. So we will wait for this and we will refresh our page. So moving to our next attack, which is phishing. This is the most common attack which is youngsters are using nowadays to hack social media accounts of their friend. And I'm sure most of you have been already frauded with these type of attack and you didn't realize it. Before telling you what is phishing attack, I would like to hear it from you guys. What do you think about this attack? So start commenting in your comment section. Kusha, can you please check the what students are commenting? Yeah, sure. Till now, there is no, uh, no any comment. I don't think so. Then the students know about pushing attack because it is such a big. So I will tell you what is a pushing attack. So phishing attack is a cyber attack in which the goal is to trick the email recipient who believes that the message is something that they want or need. It may be a request from their bank or any fake page. The recipient the recipe clicks on the link and is tricked, which leads to installation of malware, the freezing of system as a part of ransomware attack or revealing some of the sensitive information. Now I would like to play a video to show you demonstration. So here I have a tool in Kali Linux, which is also known as Black Eye. It has pre-installed malicious websites. See, we can see our attacking target without mutual consent is illegal. So I pr do not promote anyone to do this activity. We have so many websites sites here already pre-installed. I will like select Facebook and now it gives us an option to enter the IP address. And my default IP address is 192.168.1.102. I have entered the IP address and now the attack will start. As you can see, the link is generated. The link is one my ip address only so i will go and visit my ip address now
as you can see the link is created and it is just same like Facebook login page, but you can see the link is different. So this is the major point where you can identify that is link fake or real. I have entered my test ID and test password. Now once the victim click on login. It will re redirect you to the Facebook page, but you can see I have found the credentials and that's how a phishing attack is done. So I would nearly request everyone whenever they get an email from a strangers. You please check the URL that is it real or a fake and I would recommend don't open any link that is sent from the strangers because nowadays it is the major part like we uh, like hackers are attacking our, ourselves. So I would like to move on the next attack. That is click jacking. I hope uh, click jacking is a type of attack which most of you don't know and if you know about it, it's much awesome. So I would like you to tell about the click jacking. Let's start with it. Click jacking is an attack that tricks a user into clicking a malicious code that is invisible. This can cause user to unintentionally download malware, provide credentials or soft information. Typically click jacking click jacking is performed by displaying an invisible malicious code. The user believes that they are clicking the visible page, but it has clicked an invisible malicious code which can lead to expose their credentials. Uh, Rahul, can you play the next? Now the next attack is malware. In malware, I believe most of you have heard about malwares and about it. You have about it in your IT classes. If you don't know, if you don't know about malwares, don't worry, I will tell you. But before that, I want you guys to tell me that what you know about malwares and how many types of malwares are there. So please comment in comment section and I would like Kushagra to tell me if students are commenting types of malware. Yeah, Kushagra, sure. Can you... I'm checking. No, they are not asking about. Okay, then I will tell you. There, uh, first, I will tell you what is a malware. Malware is also known as malicious software. It is any program that is harmful to your computer. There are different types of malware, which includes, which includes virus, worms, Trojan horses, ransomware, and spyware. First of all, I would like to tell you about types of malware, viruses. Viruses are the malicious code whose intent is to uh, delete your files or infect your files so that you cannot access them and they easily leak to the hackers. Second type of attack is worms. Worms are not basically any viruses. They just are malicious code which copy itself to in to store your to full your storage. It does not have any harmful effect, but it uh, fulls, but it outgoes your storages. The third type is ransomware. I hope most of you have known about ransomware because recently we have a large attack of WannaCry attack. It is an attack in which when we click on a uh, malicious file, the whole computer gets encrypted and during this it asks a user to do the payment of something like one Bitcoin to Bitcoin and the payment is done in Bitcoins, which is also known as cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is the safest mode because in this way we cannot trace who is buying, who is sending uh, money to whom. It is the most secure due to which hackers get safe. These malicious programs can perform a variety of different functions such as stealing, encryption, or deleting sensitive data, altering or hijacking core computer functions and monitoring users computer activity without their permissions. Now I would proceed with the bait and switch attack. I am confirmed a lot of you guys will not know about this attack because it is not known 
attack. So a bait and a switch attack which occurs when victims are told that they are downloading. Sorry to interrupt you, Aman. Yeah. But uh, uh, someone has asked that uh, viruses that damages are uh, damages or exposes our our information. Sorry, I was not. Uh, it was not clear. Viruses that damages or exposes our information. Uh, viruses which exposes is it a question or I'm not able to get it. Someone is telling that viruses are that damages or exposes our information. Viruses disinfect our files or it makes unable to open it. It also uh, sends the file to the hacker to the, through the network and basically it's just hacking our PC and credentials. So I hope it must be clear to you. Thank yeah, you, Aman. Uh, now the next attack is bait and switch. So a bait and switch attack which occurs when victims are told that they are downloading or running a piece of safe and original content or advertisement which is then switched or redirected to something malicious. The most common method of this technique has been through internet advertisement networks. I know a lot of you guys must be wondering how this attack is performed. Basically, it is done in three steps. First, the hacker buys ad, uh, advertisement on a network or a popular website. Then the hacker submits a safe and non-malicious advertisement to the network, which is then approved. Once approved, the hacker then switches the link or the original advertisement content with the malicious, then the damage is done. So I think some of you are getting lazy. So I have some activities for you. Can you please switch? To so here is the match match the following one side. We have the terminologies and one side we have the definitions. So I would like you to tell me the answers by naming the terminology and its option number. Tushar, can you please check the answers? Yeah, sure. I'm checking for them. No one has replied yet for the answers. Well, oh, actually, we are getting some questions. So first is what is a firewall and why is it used? Okay, so I would like to tell you the answer in Hindi because it would be more clear in English. So when you enter a mall, you must see that first of all, we need to enter through the security passage. Then a guard specially check us for the prohibited uh, articles. Same like there is a computer and we have a security passage known as firewall. Whenever a file enters the computer, it has to pass conditions of firewall. Say uh, if a file, if a firewall is there and a file comes, first of all, firewall will completely check the code of the files and match it with the database of the malware. Once the malware, uh, once the file clear all the questions of the firewall, it is allowed to enter the computer and if there is no firewall, I think then any malicious code can enter our computer and it can infect us. Just in simple ways, firewall is just like a security passage in a mall where we have to go and guard check us for the prohibited article. If we have, we are sent back to the home. Same like if a file do not uh, clear the requirements of firewall, it is just uh, thrown out of or it is just rejected on the network. This is how a firewall works and it is very important because if you do not have a firewall, then uh, any malicious code can enter your computer and it can infect you and expose your credentials, which I think most of we don't want. Is it oh, clear now? Uh, we are having another question. Uh, how can we protect ourselves from clickjacking? 
see the click jacking is not a such big attack usually when we are using any operating system like kali linux we have such commands which uh, which we usually prefer to copy and just paste i would like to tell you that don't copy paste you just write the simple code on your command prompt because whenever you copy a code from a browser it may have any malicious content and when you copy it in your powershell or command prompt you may expose uh, the your credentials so the there is no such as solution but we can just write it or we have a browser safety online safety applications which we can add to get protected additionally is it clear now yeah i think that is very much clear uh, you can continue with the activity thank you so let's check the answers for the activity okay so i will tell you uh, the answers by myself first of all we have phishing a cyber crime in which a website traffic is manipulated and confidently inform is confidential information is stolen i have told you earlier also phishing it is a type of phishing attack only in which means an act of using the telephone in an attempt to scam the users in surrounding private information that will be used for identity theft nowadays many of you must be getting a call that uh, your credit card has been blocked or something like that it comes under wishing also uh, there is a hacker which claims that they have called from the bank and wants your detail to restart your credit card service and once you tell them your data your data gets stolen and your bank account gets empty the third one is malware i have just told you about malwares they are the softwares designed with intention to disrupt damage or gain unauthorized access to a computer next ransomware this also i have told you just now a specific kind of software that blocks user from accessing their device system until a ransom is paid ransom is the money which you want to fix the computer and i would like to tell you that and i would like to tell you that the ransom money is done through the cryptocurrency and we don't have 100% uh, 100% assurity that our data will be recovered so it is a very bad attack i would like you to tell that don't open any unknown software this, this another attack is farming uh, a phishing scam that infects multiple it is also a type of phishing attack only but when you do on a large scale by sending emails to mass uh, email holders that this is a lottery ticket and you have won this much account please enter your account details this is how this attack is done the uh, the another attack is piracy i hope mostly of us have done this and i would promote don't do this because it is very dangerous as I, as i will explain you further in it law piracy is a production and consumption of pirated music software games and videos like when you download any applications which are paid or uh, games which have a code to enter in free this is known as piracy the last attack is malware malvertising is a process of using advertisement to infect device and system with malware malvertising is an attack you must have seen that many of the ads pop up in your windows uh, windows when you open it or restart it it is basically a malvertising which shows you ads so i would like to tell you that if you are facing malvertising then you can go to cookies and notification section in your browser and close them so now i would like to move on next topic uh, before moving to the next topic aman uh, in this my session of the web development uh, one attendee was asking one question that why it is not preferred to use torrent can you please explain aman see uh, torrent is not i would like to say that don't use because it is safe 
बट द वर्किंग ऑफ टॉरेंट इज लाइक इट कम्स पीयर टू पीयर बिट टॉरेंट इज नोन एज अ नेटवर्क वेयर देर इज नो सच अ बिग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फॉर इट 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 इज जस्ट अ कनेक्शन बिटवीन पीसीज सो द डेटा विच यू डाउनलोड कम्स फ्रॉम द डिफरेंट पीसीज एंड वाइल डाउनलोडिंग दिस फाइल्स इट क्रिएट्स अ टनल और अ पोर्ट बिटवीन द फाइल फ्रॉम वेयर इट इज इट इज गेट डाउनलोडिंग लेट इट से बी हैकर एंड आवर PC from where we are downloading. So hacker has an access or a loophole is created when we download as a tunnel opens. So hacker basically can access our data and we can expose our data. Uh, I think it must be quite clear now. So we are having another question. What do you understand by risk vulnerability and threat? the network uh see these terms are different vulnerability i would start with vulnerability vulnerability in a network means you have any uh, chances that a hacker is a just a loophole you can say vulnerability is just a loophole you can say that someone can hack through vulnerability in your computers and basically here where white hackers come and find out the vulnerabilities then i would say about threats threat is something with a potential to harm a system or a organization it, it we, we cannot tell it as a virus but it is a kind of virus the third is risk risk is a potential for loss or damage when threat exploits a vulnerability see whenever a threat gets exploit in your pc then there is a potential of loss of your data which is also not good so here we hire a white hat hacker which work uh, to whom we give the permission and ask to please cover all the patches so that no hacking can happen in our database this is all three terms so is it clear now yeah that was very informative i think it is clear now so you can continue if there will be any other query i'll ask you sorry to interrupt you man uh, can you please uh, turn on your video okay i will turn on video actually it would take me a minute yeah sure you can take mm. while that is anyone else having any doubt no i don't think until this time anyone is ha- uh, having any doubt i think thing must it must be clear right now yeah it is clear yeah we can proceed now so yeah the next slide is how antivirus works have you ever thought how an antivirus work but before uh, but before going on further i would know if i would like to know if you guys know how an antivirus works so can you please comment in comment section that does a virus provide 100% security to our computer kushagr can you please check yeah i'm on to it my question is that if you have an external antivirus can you have 100% security to your computer uh yeah someone has answered yes mm, uh, okay any other answers no not it you there is a confusion okay, so, between the students some are saying yes some are saying no Oh. don't worry i will i will tell you uh, by the end of this webinar you will be pretty sure that does an antivirus provide an 100% security or not so first of all i will start with what an antivirus is antivirus something is something which is also known as anti malware software it is designed to detect prevent and take action to disarm or remove malicious software from our computers such as viruses bombs trojan horses 
it may also prevent from removing unwanted spywares and adwares in addition to other type of malware program now you know about antivirus i would like to tell you about how antivirus works antivirus antivirus software will begin by checking your computer programs and comparing them to the known type of malware in their database uh, this is the reason why it is always said to update your database of the security now it will scan your computer for the behavior that may sign the presence of a new unwanted malware or it will compare the files with the known malware in their database typically antivirus software uses three types of scanning detection processes first a specific detection this works for known malware by specific set of characteristics in this detection malware simply compares a file with a known type of malware which is just same does not have any difference in their code second detection is generic detection this process looks for malware that are variety, uh, that ha that are variants of known families of malware related by common code bases so in this detection so in this detection what a antivirus does it compares the malware which are not 100% same but it matches their database by let's say 50% or a 60% and in last we have th uh, third detection which is known as heuristic detection in this process the scan is done for the new unknown viruses by looking for unwanted suspicious behavior or a file structure so in this type of detection the antiviruses scan the file by their action what they are doing so this scans new type of antivirus by this i would like to say the detection tools are highly effective and no antivirus software is fault safe now i will tell you now rahul will tell you about necessary things to have with antivirus uh, so i would like to say that uh, no it is not necessary to have an additional antivirus in your pc uh, you are just requested to follow some steps to safe uh, to stay safe online uh, you must firstly always update your windows defender frameworks Uh, never turn off the real real time scanner for third party application claiming to activate your application uh, third is do not open any link file which is uh, sent from a stranger and the last uh, even though you uh, feel like your pc is under attack <coughs> you can download the uh, free malware hunter from the official website of the government now i would like to uh, tell you uh, some tips how to uh, stay safe online Uh, always keep your uh, software and microsoft firewall updated do not respond to any email uh, attached from an unknown source or an ethic source use firewall to secure your computer and networks from hacker and cyber intruder keep up to date uh, keep up to date with the latest security updates and patches for operating system and other sort of softwares rely on hardware to guess password formed by a combination of upper case lower case numbers and special characters take timely uh, backup of your data on your disk or cloud do not share your computer or laptop with a stranger ensure to delete cookies save password autofills or any other sensitive data while you are surfing on a cyber, uh, cyber cafe uh check uh, check our online security on regular basis make sure to educate your family members for safe usage of home computers now i would like to tell you about some cyber ethics uh, cyber ethic refers to the code of responsible behavior on the internet just as uh, we are taught to act responsible in everyday life with lessons such, uh, such as uh, don't take what doesn't belong to you and do not harm others we must act responsibly in the uh, cyber world as well the basic rule is do not do something in cyber space that uh, that you would consider wrong or uh, illegal in everyday life first of all uh, do not use rude or offensive language do not cyber bully do not plagiarize do not break into someone else computer uh, do not use someone else password uh, create your own password which is not common do not attempt to infect or in any way try to make someone else computer unusable adhere to copyright restrictions when downloading material from the internet including software and games or movies or anything else 
Now I will request Sir Nuf uh, Aman to tell you about some uh, IT laws. Now uh, you know all the cyber ethics. Now you know all the cyber ethics that will tell you if you break in cyber ethic, what will happen. We have several IT law. I cannot tell you all, so I will tell you all main laws which they with their act number, description, and penalty. But before that, I would like to tell you about the plagiarism. Plagiarism is an act where you copy or download a file which has been made by another. For example, let's uh, take an example of a template. You downloaded a template for your website, and without mentioning the without mentioning the creator's name, and you use the template, it comes under the act of plagiarism. I will cover the penalty in few points. So the IT laws are under first under IT Act 2000, which states that sending someone messages by assuming a false identity has a penalty of a term of up to three years of imprisonment and also a fine. Second, under IT Act 2000, according to which hacking someone's computer, email, or social network accounts have a penalty of a term up to two. Or three years imprisonment and fine. So that's why we say don't hack someone's computer network and don't make any of the fake account on the social media platform because if you do so, you may get arrested or have a heavy fine on you. Now the third act under the Copyright Act 1957, according to which downloading movies and music from free for free illegal copyrights or distributing software using the internet without the consent of right owners has a penalty of a term up to 6 months to 3 years of imprisonment and fine so this is known as piracy where you downloaded the free uh, the free content from a website and most of these websites have malware in it that's why they say that please turn off your antivirus while installing this software and this is why we tell you that don't download any third party application in your computer without knowing the registered without knowing the registered email addresses the fourth act is under the indian penal code according to which posing defamatory uh, one minute please so uh, under the indian penal attack code according to which posting defamatory statements image or a video about a person on a social media chat bulletin board or any digital space has a bullying has a penalty of a term of 2 to 3 years imprisonment or a fine or a both that's why we say that if you see any disturbing content on instagram please don't on any social media account please don't promote it or make your story by supporting it just try to ignore it or report it because if you promote the thing if you promote the thing you may get under some legal actions which we don't want so the next act is under copyright act 1957 according to which using word ideas image or a data of another person without attributing the source this is known as plagiarism where you use where you are using word ideas or images of another person without giving them the credit has a penalty of 6 to 3 years 6 months to 3 years and a fine also the the last the last it act is these are most common uh, to in today's time and trust me it is very dangerous in this critical time when schools are providing us online classes and teachers are devoting their time for us so it is our uh, to uh, sorry are devoting time for us so that this academic year could not be wasted few of the students are joining them with the fake names they do not 
uh, they do this to show how cool they are in front of their friends but they are actually committing a big cyber offense and trust me it is the big cyber offense that you are committing if you are doing this thing and the school has all the rights granted by the constitutions to rusticate you and you can all you must have uh, you can also get the de uh, demote demoted also the constitution to rustication that the student finally heavy penalized for breaking the laws now i hope the laws are clear and i would like to tell you that please follow the sixth law as it is very important now we are moving to now we are moving to our last topic of webinar uh, do you think i'm sorry to interrupt you Yes. Someone is asking that there has been a rumor that Zoom is not safe. Is it really? And how do we know is it safe or not? See, uh, Zoom is not safe because the rumor. They are not rumors actually. They are true that Zoom is providing our credentials as it is a part of a Chinese application only. And you know that every almost every Chinese application. Has a data pirate, sorry, data copying feature. So I don't promote you to use the Zoom classes because uh, it transfers your data while you are connected to a class. It sends your some of your data, uh, some of your data to the hackers. But recently, after all these news, Zoom has finally decided and updated their software, uh, due to which they are now not. Copying any data of your because many of people were installing the application and any big firm will not like to delete it application. So now you are safe. You have the updated version of the Zoom. Make sure to update your Zoom because in the new Zoom update, your no data is being copying to the hackers. It's going to the hackers. Same was going on with the true caller that people were saying that true callers is. Taking our directory and selling it in different countries, and uh, for this, Truecaller has claimed that they are not copying any of the details. So be safe. There is no issue right now. I hope that it must be clear right now. Yeah, it's very clear now. Thank you, Amal. Now so, you can proceed with the presentation. Uh, after the act, now we we are moving to. Almost our last topic. Last topic. Here, I will tell you that. Do you think that your Gmail account has been hacked or being a part of a data breach by the hacker? So we have a way that we can detect our ID. That is it hacked or not? We will use an online service, which is also known as Have I Been Pound. So we are. We will open this link and will tell you that how this is done. See here, I will write my Gmail account. See, good news. Now, no, you are you are secure. But I will like to show you uh, uh, that my ID was recently been breached. Uh, was a part of data breach in account, and I would like to show you that how it looks. Rahul, can you please type Aman S H A uh, in the Chrome section? Aman S H A 2006. See, as I was telling you, that my ID was a recently data uh, was a part of data breach. So this is how you can check your email ID. You can check your email ID that it has been hacked or being any part of data breach. Now I would like to tell you most of you wonder that how strong is your password or in how many time it can be hacked. So there is an online services which is known as how secure my password is. And I would like to tell you that how we can check our password security level. Now here we can add our password. See, 
we will get an idea that how much time will it take 3 million years 16 million years to crack your password but i would like to tell you that never write your original password here because some of the hackers also attack on these type of application you can get an idea from these type of services that how much secure is your password or how much can uh, it can how much time will it take to break so now moving to the next slide yeah these are the these are the two websites which i will tell you are very important for you if you are being a part of cyberbullying or cyber security first i will start with cyberbullying cyberbullying uh, the government of india has provided us a website which is known as cybercrime.gov.in if you are somehow being a part of a cyber pulling and don't want to expose your id or something like that we have a website of government here we can log an fir by staying anonymously uh, i can show you rahul please can you click on the link see report a woman and a child related we have a option to report an fir anonymously and we are also having a first of all let's check it yeah this is the form you can enter the and we have also an option to track our file complaint if you are think that your uh, complaint is not working or not proceeding you can also check the track in in proof of evidence you just only record a ss or a screenshot of your chats of cyber bullying now the next website is cyber security these are mainly for the companies and uh, people of big organizations where you can where you can tell that if you are being a part of a, any of the cyber crime like hacking your details or someone doing plagiarism or piracy you can come and report here it uh, it is truly free and we have some of the features like uh, cyber swachhta kendra.gov has an uh, has an application which is also known as casper sky malware hunter we can download it for free and if you are thinking that your computer is infected by any type of uh, malware yeah this you can see the uh, security tools we have a fey bot removal these basically bots see we have a quickly lent uh, malware detector for bad usb and everything so don't purchase i would like to highly recommend don't purchase any type of antivirus externally the windows uh, the windows defense system is all you need but just follow some protocols that rahul have told and always update your database and if you even think that your windows defender is not working you can download the tool from here and check your internet now uh, i would specially want you all that the cbse has provided a pdf recently on their website which uh, which is on cyber security they are mostly for all, all age children and i would highly recommend to go through that pdf because it tells you almost everything about how to serve safe or what are the actions and we have further activities in it so i would like to tell you please go through it and check it yeah the webinar is over now if you have any doubt you can comment in comment section we are we have provided our gmail accounts uh, sorry the accounts email accounts and instagram ids if you have any doubt you can tell us and we are always there to help you so if you have any queries please ask so one is asking what is cryptography 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 is a method is a method sorry is a method of transfer or transmitting confidential data in encoded way i will tell you first of all the definition cryptography is a method to transport and transmit confidential data in encoded way to protect information from a third party now i will tell you in simple words suppose uh, you have an 
confidential data which you want to transfer to your friend and don't want it to expose to the network or somehow so you are transferring your data through whatsapp and don't want others to see it what you will do we have a method which is known as cryptography which is mostly done by hiding your data in a png file image file in the, uh, this is how the others will not know that you are hiding any data they will just simply think that it is an image or something you are sending to your friend but later on you can tell your friend that the image has a cryptography message in it and that's how it is done not only you a uh, big organizations perform this activity to secure their database and data is it clear now Hello, is it clear? I think uh, this was the information and it is just clear now to the students. So, yeah, we are having another doubt. Uh, how can we set up phishing? How can we prevent phishing? Uh, I would like to tell you that how you can prevent phishing, but I will not tell you that how to create image because I don't promote any of these activities as I have told you the IT act you can even end up going chill so the phishing attack first of all whenever a phishing attack is done basically it is done on a large scale you will receive a message or a coupon or something like that in your email or a normal message for example take that you have received an email from a uh, from a stranger that they are saying that congratulations you have won the lottery or congratulations you have a coupon of 90 percent on uh, on swiggy swiggy paytm and etc and what a person does is that they simply visit the website and when you once visit the website some are highly advanced that when you click on the link your whole system gets infected and in some cases what a login page is uh, login page is created when you enter your login page uh, when you enter your login details in it it will simply redirect you to the message or the original website but the data which you will enter in the login id page will go to the hacker and this is how once i get the information i will start blackmailing the the person that you have to do this or i can take all the money which is present in your bank account without without being in jail so it is done on a large scale and it is very risky job to do fishing and everything people just do it for fun and i promote don't do it it is very harmful activity yeah that's it so uh there we are having another question so one is asking so now is zoom safe uh, sorry is uh, yeah after the after the update you cannot say that it is 100% secure but yeah now your data is now your data is secure and it has work on its network there are slight, slightly issues which you can see but yeah your data is secure in some cases this is done to dfm and uh, software Thank you Rahul and Aman for making us aware yeah. about cyber, cyber threats and the way of prevention against those which are uh, which are necessary for us to know about. Also, I would like to acknowledge our Honorable Principal Ma'am and the IT department for their back, back end support. For their further doubts regarding the webinar, feel free to contact us on the email ID in the chat box. Uh, we all are invariably willing to answer all your doubts. Thank you guys for the enthusiastic participation. We look forward to seeing you on our next session on Adobe Spark scheduled on 15th of June, that is Monday. You can freely contact us on the mails that you can see on the screen. We are willing to answer all your queries. And do not forget to fill in the feedback form we are looking forward for all your suggestions for improvement in DMAS. The feedback form is in the uh, Q&A section. You can see, uh, you can go there and you can fill the feedback form. At the end, stay safe, stay home, or either, or either I would like to say, uh, stay cyber safe. 
and remember that one single vulnerability is all what an attacker or a hacker needs. Thank you for attending this session and peace.